Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to share my five biggest tips for growing your soap making business and be sure to stick around for number five, you're not going to want to miss it. So tip number one is find your niche. There's a lot of different areas in the soap making business where you know there's there's people that make um, the, the decorative soaps, there's people that make the, the soaps with the fragrance oils that smell really nice and then there's people like us that make that our niche is more of the, the natural type um, consumer and so you know for us our niche is using organic oils and pure essential oils you know then there's that's not to say that there's not plenty of customers out there that want the other kinds of soap as well so you know but for us it was an easy decision because that's just something that we really believe in um, as far as like you know not using any chemicals and stuff and so that's our niche you know and so and we've had to kind of adapt a little bit over the over the years like for example, like our lavender soap, um, you know, we use all natural clays and pure essential oils, um, but we use a purple Brazilian clay in there. And I was also grounding up some lavender buds and then I was putting the lavender buds on the top of the soap and it looked really nice. But then one of my customers or a couple of them actually complained, you know, saying that, hey, this looks really nice, but every time we shower with it, those lavender buds, they wash right off and they clog the shower drain. Um, and so that kind of right there told me that, that my group of customers, they don't necessarily care so much about what it looks like or, you know, any little fancy frills that you can do to, to make your soap stand out. They cared more about the ingredients in the soap. And so that's what we've kind of adapted to, to learn to, uh, to cater to that group, um, which, which is great too, because I mean, it's the same ideals as what we have. So that would be my first tip is, is find your niche. So tip number two will be to experiment in small batches. Um, you know, for us, again, we use essential oils and anyone who buys essential oils or even the fragrance oils, they're really expensive. And that's kind of where you get into the, the bulk of, of the cost of your soap is in those ingredients. You know, and so for us, like when we're picking out our different scents that we want to make or we're experimenting to find out what we might want to make, we, uh, I'll take like an actual dropper. So I take all my essential oils and I'll put them in little two ounce dropper bottles. And when I get ready to experiment, I'll take whatever essential oils I want to use and I'll have a small jar and then I'll just place, um, if, if it's two parts of lavender and three parts of patchouli, then I'll put two drops of lavender, three drops of patchouli, um, and I'll keep a note of everything that I put in there. And then if, and then I'll put the lid on it, let it sit for a day or so, and I may come back and smell it several times, you know, and just see sometimes scents grow on me. Sometimes like right off the bat, I just know that that's not one I want to make. Um, and so I'll kind of play around with them that way. And that way it, I don't have to use up a ton of my essential oils to experiment. And also I'm not using any to make a batch of soap before I determine what I think will, you know, be the best, uh, the best scent that I want to make, you know, so that would be one way to do that. And then another thing as far as making in small batches is to like measure out your, your oils and your milk and your lye and all your ingredients to, to make like two bars or so, you know, and, and obviously it's really hard to find a mold that you can pour two bars in. So don't even worry about that. Like we have these little pink silicone molds that I think they're like six per thing. And so I'll just mix up a, a tiny experiment batch. I'll put it in that mold and you know, it's gonna be kind of ugly and I'm not really going for looks or anything on that. I'm just trying to find out is the essential oils that I picked out, are they still gonna smell good with the other oils, the carrier oils that I use to make my soap? And then also when I'm experimenting with the carrier oils, finding that right combination, um, you know, between the different ones to find out what, you know, what gives me a good bar that's kind of a balance of hardness and lather and cleanliness um, and all that. So, you know, so just trying to experiment with those small batches uh, will help save you a lot of money on that front end. And you'll get to do a whole lot more experimentation to find out, you know, what you like you know i, I don't want to say uh you know to set your or to um ah. do, 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 edit do, do. i don't want to tell you to prepare uh for failure but just know that you know your first attempt at, at most things are just they're not going to be winners 
or you know, maybe like really close and you may just want to experiment with tweaking a recipe one way or the other uh, to see if you can get a little bit more of whatever you're looking for out of it. So again, so tip number two would be experiment in small batches. Tip number three will be to buy in bulk and, and buy in bulk as much as you can. You know, it may not make sense to, even though you may save five or six cents an ounce if you buy, you know, a 44 pound bag of coconut oil compared to, you know, uh, whatever the next size down would be. Um, you know, if you're not gonna use that in a reasonable time frame, because you don't wanna have your, all your money just tied up in your carrier oils or your essential oils or whatever it is, and they're just sitting there for a year or so. And then also their shelf life, you don't wanna keep it on, on hand too long before you have to use it. So just kinda know like what you, or try to estimate how much you plan to use, you know, in a six month period, and, and if you can afford to, then try to buy the, the biggest volume of what you can afford you know, right there, and, and that'll save you a good bit of money too. You know, and so we do that with our, our carrier oils and uh, and all our essential oils as well. Our clays, we can still, we're still small enough that we order those, you know, like in a two or three pound bag at a time. But, um, you know, like our essential oils, you know, we started off getting like an eight ounce container. Um, and now we're up to, we normally buy, they come in like 32 or 33 ounce containers. Um, you know, and there's a few of them like the lavenders and the peppermints that we kind of go through a little bit more frequently than the other essential oils. You know, we're kind of borderline to step it up to where we can order like a gallon at a time. Um, you know, we're just not quite there yet. So, and the money that it saves me to order a gallon of lavender oil versus buying roughly two quarts of, of lavender oil, um, it doesn't save me quite enough to to, to make that jump yet so so we're not quite there you know yet and that's okay um, you know another thing as far as besides your ingredients for your soaps you know something else to think about the buying in bulk you know is your labeling like how are you gonna package your products you know and for us like we wrap all of our soaps in soap bands like little cardboard strips that are printed by a company um, and they all have the different scents you know, and we try to order, you know, a minimum of a thousand per um, per cent label, you know, so that way it kind of lowers that cost down. But, you know, I mean, every little bit, you know, adds up. I mean, if, if, if I can order a thousand and it brings it down to, I, I don't know, 13 cents a label, or if I order 500 and it's, you know, 20 cents a label, you know, I mean, that's seven cents over the course of 500 soaps. I mean, every little bit, again, adds up. You know, so just trying to do whatever makes sense uh, financially, you know, that we can afford to do as well to be able to buy in bulk. And also another thing is like besides our soap, and, and all of our soaps are the same size, and so all the soap bands are the exact same size, they're just different designs, you know. But then when we have like our body butters and our sugar scrubs and um, our shaving soaps, they all have like a two inch round label. And the company that I buy from, they don't care if I send them 20 different designs or, or two designs, um, if they're all the same size and the, same, the exact same um, print label that they're gonna be, like the high gloss or whatever it is that I choose. Um, as long as that's all the same, I can send them as many different variations of that size and they will quote me a price on, on that, that one particular label. So I can order, you know, I've got four different scents of body butters and three shaving soaps. Um, and, and I think maybe the sugar scrubs use the same label too. So I mean, between there, there's like 10 or 11 products, you know, and, and I don't need a thousand of each one of those. Um, again, we're just not that big of a company that I go through that, that kind of volume in a reasonable time frame. So, you know, but between all 11 of them, I can order a, a thousand or maybe 2000 labels combined and I can pick 500 of this sin or 300 of this, you know, depending on which one is a bigger seller and which one we move the most. Um, you know, and so that gives me a lot of flexibility in doing that. So, so even just thinking about like how you design your labels and the packaging and, and being, just being able to find companies that will print in, in volume and give you that discount. Um, you know, again, every little bit helps. So, so that would be my, my third tip is to, to buy in bulk you know, as much as you can. Tip number four, 
is going to be to have multiple avenues to get your product out there. For us, we started off doing craft shows, and that was a really good way for us to meet. Uh, and most of our craft shows we did were local, and so we got to meet the community, you know, and, and let people know about us. And a lot of times, that that local community is really your best place to start because. You know, people we find want to support local businesses, and so if you're if you're a small farm, you know, and you're close to any kind of even a, a small city, um, you know, just being able to, to get out there and get your product in their hands, uh, that tends to be a really good way to get repeat customers. Um, you know, because you have it's not just a a one-time interaction that you have with somebody, and so over time you build relationships with these people. You know, and they get to know you, and they know your farm and your product, and you know, it's just a great way to to do that. You know, we have traveled to a few out of town shows. Uh, we do some shows that are about four or five hours away. Um, you know, and and we're pretty picky on the ones that we do that are that far away, just because I mean, it's a lot of work to load up everything you have, and and you know, we we travel as a family, so it's our you know, our whole family, all our kids, and everything, and then also we're leaving behind a farm, and so we have to think about you know who's going to take care of that and everything so it's a lot of work for us to travel out of town to do some of those shows but there's there's one or two that we still do um just because they're, they're every year they're consistently good um they're also down by the beach so it's kind of a paid vacation so you know so that's what we do that's how we started off was through craft shows and then we developed our website and so we have an online store which a lot of, especially the out of town craft shows, we, we noticed that we would get a, a big increase in our online sales. And these are from areas where we had just been uh, with craft shows. You know, and craft shows, like if it's a new one that people don't know your product, they may, you know, like we, we have different set of uh, pricing for our soaps, but they may just buy one bar or three bars of soap. They're not gonna buy like 10 because they don't know your product yet. And so they just wanna buy something just to test it. And so, you know, they'll, they'll do that. And, but then our online sales increased because of the work that we did at these craft shows. So that's been a, a really good thing for us. So that, that's, that's one area to get your product out there. You know, and another one kind of going back to your local community is, you know, any kind of local boutique. Uh, if you can make a, a display and you can go, you know, it helps if you know the shop owners too, but you know, you just go go in there and just talk to the, the owner and just see if they'd be willing to to have your product in their store. And it helps, too, if you have a display box with, you know, your soaps or whatever it is that you're you're selling, you know, in a display that, you know, all you have to do is open a lid, set it on the counter, and they don't have to do any work, you know, and then obviously they get, you know, a commission from it. But that's another way for uh, for you to be able to get your product out to other people that you may uh, have not otherwise had a chance to, to come in contact with. You know, and then also, again, staying in the local community, you know, a lot of towns have farmer's markets. You know, and I don't think those are like really, you're not gonna, at least we've never sold, you know, $1,000 a day at a farmer's market, especially a local one that's, you know, pretty small. But again, it's another thing that we can do to, you know, again, get our product out there into the hands of people in our community and, and build those relationships. And we do other things with our farm too besides just our products. And so for, for the community to, to be aware of what we do and everything, you know, is important on, on a lot of other different levels too besides just selling our soap. You know, and, and then the, the, the last thing as far as an idea on getting your product out there is, you know, if you have a physical store. And then for this, if, for us, um, we don't have that kind of money to invest in a retail space. And, you know, we, we couldn't compete with a, a big box store when it comes to that. And so, you know, if you're like us, that's just something that's just not attainable now. and. Honestly, I don't see that ever being, uh, you know, something that would be attainable. It's just it's so expensive to do that, uh, and we just don't have that kind of kind of money, um, you know. And again, we're still a relatively small soap company, so um, you know. But I do see some that, that do that, and um, you know, if they if they do well with it, you know, that that's great for them. Um, but again, for most people, you know, like us, it's just not an attainable thing. So. 
So we've never even attempted that. Um, but one thing that we have done is on our farm, we have a small 15 acre farm, you know, and so we do have a farm store. Um, and it's not really, we don't have like set open hours, but, um, but it's, it's one of those things that just slowly over time people find out about it. And, uh, and so people can come here to our farm and purchase our products as well. So, you know, that's five or six areas that, that we have avenues to, uh, to getting our product out there. You know, and, and again, going back to kind of like the, the bulk pricing stuff, like every little bit helps. So just keep kind of chipping away at it and coming up with ideas on how you can get your product out there. So that would be tip number four is, you know, just to, uh, just to be able to create multiple avenues to, to get your product out there. All right, so tip number five is to think outside the box. Again, this ties in with number four. It's like the name of the game is getting your product in as many hands as possible. And so in tip number four, we covered all the, the regular stuff. But now let's, let's get creative and think about what can we do. And we can do one thing, some things that our competition doesn't implement into their strategy that might give us a leg up on them. So the, the first thing is social media giveaway. And that's not really something that's really outside the box too much. Uh, I see a lot of people that do that. It's a good way to kind of build your social media followers and stuff. Um, you know, but it's, it's a good way to, you know, get your product out to somebody. I mean, we have followers from all over the country and probably a few from outside the country. And so, um, you know, it's a good way to send our products out to, you know, different parts of the country that obviously we're just not going to travel to. Another thing to think about would be latch on with some other local nonprofits or some schools or people that are doing um, like a fundraiser or a silent auction and they're looking for uh, local businesses to donate stuff. Um, you know, and that would be a good way to get a lot of people, you know, to at least see your products, you know, and, you know, they, they would see the, the charitable side of, of your of your donation and sometimes people that comes back to you in, in ways that you wouldn't even expect so you know I mean the times that we give away stuff um, we don't do it for any other reason than just it's, it's just the right thing to do and, and I couldn't tell you how many times that has come back in, in some other form uh, you know that, that blessed us so um, so that would be uh, one of my suggestions is to, to do that you know a third thing would be if you're like us, um, you know, again, we have a small 15 acre farm here and there's a lot more to our farm than just our soap business. I mean, we, we raise a lot of different animals. We raise them for meat and, and all that, but we also have Airbnbs on our farm, you know, and so that brings in people from all over the world to our farm. And so again, having that farm store, you know, feeds off from, from being able to bring guests here through our Airbnb. But also some other things that we do, or we do like community uh, events that are free to the public where, you know, we love to share our farm with people and have them come out and they can bring their kids or their families and play with the animals, you know, and the stores open then is that's not something that we push and that's not our main objective uh, when we do those events because our, our heart is more for sharing our place with families. But that does bring people out to our farm and sometimes that turns into sales. You know, but, and if you're getting into soap making and if you've been doing it for a while, you know, maybe you're to a point where you're comfortable teaching classes. There's a lot of people out there that, I mean, not only would they love to be, uh, be taught how to do a soap making class, but they'd also be willing to pay for it as well. You know, and so that would be something, uh, you know, that maybe you could implement uh, into your strategy to bring people to you and again, it, and we found too that it's so much easier to be able to bring people to our farm to sell our products than it is for us to go out and uh, travel and take in all those extra expenses to get our product out there. So those would be the, the main things. But the, the last thing that I wanna share with you as far as thinking outside the box, and this is something I came up with, um, I don't know if I came up with it. This is something that I had the thought of doing um, about six months ago and we've been busy with some other things so I just haven't had time to actually do that yet but it's to uh, do a fundraiser where you know get a, a local school a, a Girl Scout troop a Boy Scout troop whatever it is you know a, a football team cheerleader team whatever it is um, you know have a, a list of your products and then go out there and 
you know, they sell your products to you because a lot of times they sell them to family and friends. And, you know, and most family and friends, you know, if their if their grandson or niece or daughter or whoever comes up and says, hey, would you support me, you know, going to this camp or whatever they're raising their, their money for, you know, by purchasing these products, you know, that's a great way, I think. Again, we haven't implemented it yet, but I think that that would be a really great way to get our product out there even more into the community. If you're doing a fundraiser idea, um, typically, I mean, our, it varies a little bit, but when we price our products, our retail price is roughly four times the material cost. And so our wholesale price is double our material cost, if that makes sense. So, so our, our wholesale price is half of our, is 50% of our retail price. You know, and so through that fundraiser, you know, they sell it at retail and then but they buy it from you at wholesale pricing, you know, and so if they sell, you know, for every hundred dollars of product that they sell, they actually make 50 bucks, which, you know, is pretty good. And that's a lot more profit than, than most people make on fundraisers. So I think that would be a great way to, um, you know, to try to get your product out there. Well, thanks for watching our video. I hope this gave you some ideas on helping you start your soap making business. You know, and if there's something that you uh, thought that you have on some ideas, uh, we'd love to hear it. So be sure to drop it in the comments below. Um, to see a video on how we make our goat milk soap, be sure to click this video right here. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for future videos.